So for Urtec last year, we wrote a paper where we analyzed hundreds and hundreds of wells that have gauge pressures, and we compared the gauge me uh, measurements to the different correlations that we have in wits and pots. The biggest learning from that uh, exercise was that the, uh, the biggest uncertainty is not what correlation you pick. The biggest uncertainty is the input data. And we as engineers, we need to develop a little framework so that we can assess whether the input data makes sense or not. And those frameworks are typically graphical and I'm gonna go through them here uh, today. Real quick, what correlations do we actually support in Winston Plus? We support Hogan Brown, Banks and Brills, Gray, and Boulders, Minot, and Gray All of these are what you call a so-called drift flux model, which is preferred typically due to their simplicity. The alternative to this is, you know, momentum and energy equations uh, that you, uh, uh, where you basically solve for each of the phases separately. This is what we refer to as mechanistic models. That is not something we have in Whitson Plus uh, yet, but maybe that will come in the future. But again, as I mentioned, we wrote this paper, we analyzed over 300,000 data points in this paper. And by far the biggest uncertainty, that was the input data. And, uh, and uh, the difference in the correlation, okay, you know, uh, it was clear that both Martin and Gayar and Hogan Brown did best, uh, and then Banks and Brills would always over predict and, and Gray would uh, under predict. But the, you know, all of these are still kind of within engineering error, uh, but where you can get huge differences, like over 100% differences, is if your input data is not correct. And when I'm talking about input data, I'm typically talking about flow paths versus time, or potentially, you know, errors in the actual sizes of, of the tubing and, uh, and the casing. Um, a quick reminder, one thing just to, to, uh, to uh, emphasize is that if you've ever seen a gauge pressure, a real one, they're actually smooth. Uh, so that's, you know, why I always tell people, smooth your bottom of pressures after you calculate them. Um, and, and again, just to, you know, hopefully highlight that for you, you know, this is the gauge pressure and this is the calculated equivalent of the same pressure, more noisy. As soon as we start to calculate stuff, it becomes more noisy. Here is another example, the calculated equivalents with four different correlations to, to the right, more noisy. Gauge pressures are smooth, um, the calculated values are, are not. And, and you know, this goes on and on. Here's just a few, few examples of, uh, of this. So when you see crazy changes in your bottom of pressures, for instance, just visually, you, you know, you see some crazy change happening very abruptly in your calculated bottom of pressure, you should be skeptical. So you, you need to use your engineering critical thinking when you look at the calculated bottom of pressure. Uh, so here I have some simple checks that I uh, would recommend you to go in and uh, look at, and I'm gonna move myself a, a little bit here down to the right. Um, so, you know, for instance, if you have casing pressures and they're larger than the tubing while tubing is installed, well, then most likely your flow path is tubing. Uh, if you, you have tubing installed, but the casing pressure is less or equal to the tubing, then typically we're, we're dealing with, uh, with uh, uh, annular flow, okay? Typically, you know, you inject through the tubing, uh, injection gas, and then you produce up the annulus. If tubing is not installed, of course, then, you know, it must be casing flow. Um, and uh, and the, the last thing is if your casing pressure and tubing pressures are, are, are almost the same, they're similar, then in many cases you're actually dealing with co-flow. And what the reason why companies would go in and do that is that they want to save money on future workovers, so they go in and install tubing from day one, and then they produce up the analysts and the tubing at the same time until a period of time where they would like turn the tubing on, but instead of doing a well intervention at that point, uh, you know, they just uh, start to flow up the tubing only or the analyst only. Uh, so these are kind of, this is kind of our solution space. And I would like you to, to, to just keep these, these uh, rules in mind when you look at, uh, at uh, bottom of pressures. So if I pull up Whitson Plus right here, uh, in Whitson Plus, in the bottom of pressure feature, there's some very important input that is always toggled on by default. In addition to, of course, all the calculated pressures, you will have the tubing and the casing pressures down here. And they are uh, for Q QC purposes. There's also another important input that uh, you can toggle on, which is show wellbore configuration dates. And that will tell you what has been uploaded here 
in terms of configuration and when was that done. Uh, and again, you can change that graphically uh, here in the software as well. And that is to try to help you, like if you see a sudden change in your bottom of pressure, does that correspond with a change in your flow path or an installation of a, of, of a new artificial lift? Well, this thing will answer uh, that. So in, in this particular case, we're dealing with Boldus Mark and Gaiar down uh, you know, to the install of, uh, of uh, uh, artificial uh, lift here, basically, gas, gas lift and, and uh, tubing. That happens at this particular date right here. And then you see we start to, to, uh, to uh, have both casing and tubing pressures. Here, the casing pressure is larger than the tubing pressure. So go back to your little list here. Okay, casing is larger than tubing, most likely tubing flow. If this was flipped, most likely you would do anal or gas lift in that uh, particular instance uh, right, uh, right here. Okay, so make sure that you, 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 you question yourself if, if there was some crazy change here happening uh, at uh, exactly when, when these, these uh, lift changes are, are happening. Uh, see if it makes sense and, and compare them with, with, uh, with these pressures. Another thing you can go in and do is you can also show the surface rates as a function of time. Like, okay, if there's something weird happening with your data, you can look at the surface rates right uh, here, and that will come on the secondary axis uh, that we have uh, over, uh, over here. And this part right here, that will be the gas lift, uh, uh, lift rates. So in this particular example, we can see that the gas lift rates came online just after when the tubing was installed right here, which makes sense. So you can use this combination of, of the pressures, that draw input, and the, the, you know, the rate data uh, to quality check that you're, you've done something correctly. And most of the times, if you've done this a few times, you can literally just go into this feature and in, in a matter of a couple of seconds, you can see, does this make any sense or does it not make any sense? And it's not many rules that you need to remember. These rules are also in our manual. Again, just kind reminder that you can access our manual up here to the right.